But I saw quite a few people, and I know everyone's doing their best to get here as early as they can, but I, since I saw several come in after Tim uh, gave you know, his, little, his portion this morning, I want to remind you, since you weren't here, he said to him what he keeps hearing is like three words that in his mind sums up the conference. And it's not being spoken by the, you know, Jesus is not speaking as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not really speaking as the lamb here. But he's speaking as a husband to his bride. And he says, what, Tim says, what I keep hearing are three words. I want you. I want you. We are the bride. He is madly in love with you. <laughs> I mean madly, desperately in love with you. Amen. And he wants you. Someone shared a word with me. This is one. They want to remain anonymous. But uh, just listen to this. It's the Lord speaking. It says, Beloved, I see the emptiness and the discontentment in your heart. You thought that serving me and doing ministry in my name would satisfy the longing in your heart. But you have been disappointed and frustrated. Your desire to know me is so great that you feel your heart will burst. And you've wondered if there's something wrong with you because you don't get excited about church activities and programs like others around you. Your strong desire to know me brings great joy to my heart. Be encouraged, beloved, for I am the one who has placed that desire within you, and I am drawing you unto myself. You see, no amount of activity, no amount of successful ministry will fulfill that desire within you. Only knowing me intimately will satisfy the longing and the desire of your heart. I'm not coming back for servants. I'm coming back for a bride. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so rise up, my fair one, and come away with me. Away from the activities, the programs, the traditions of men. You won't find me in those things. You'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart, and your soul, mind, and strength. Don't worry about working for me. Just spend time with me. <laughs> Is that good stuff or what? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, now this being the, the last service of this, of this conference, I want to put you in remembrance of a few things that we never even got to talk about during the conference because... See, again, I already know the name of the particular devil. I know the name of the devil that's waiting at your house. Uh, yeah, you see, from, <laughs> his name is Samo. Samo, Samo. Wasn't the conference wonderful? I felt his love. I felt his presence. Hallelujah. I heard the word of God. I saw Bronk and Jim be ushers. Hallelujah. <laughs> is that perfect or what? The greatest among you shall be your servant. Perfect. But see, Monday, that same old. And I'm just going to tell you as a teacher now. Say, I'm not a pastor really. I'm going to tell you as a teacher, if you don't do something different, nothing will change. Now, I'm not going to take a show of hands, but I'm going to advertise. Can I advertise a few moments? This will help you even when you return. If you have not heard ever the Born Again Trail by this young upcoming uh, minister named Dave, Dave Roberson. If you not have not heard ever the Born Again Trail, you really don't have anything else to do. You really don't. I'm telling you, it is 60 messages. Now, it'll take you a little while. But it is like a, it is like a college curriculum in the Born Again Trail. There's much more on it than just what it sounds like. You will not be the same person. And if it's been a while since you've heard it, I recommend you hear it again. 
I've been listening to it myself again. Oh, my Lord. It's, it's so easy to let things slip. Secondly, now I'm going <clears> to, <throat> this one came through this other guy. I'm not real sure about him. It's Gary Carpenter guy. I don't know. <laughs> but if you have not heard the series that he brought forward through me titled First John. I'm telling you, it will, it will change your life. Yes, the subtitle of that one, it's called the First John series. The subtitle is Removing the Gray from Your Gospel. Yes. I've been at this a long time. He has narrowed my path significantly over all these years. But I'm telling you, the First John series narrowed my path even more. And it'll do the same for you. Bronk, he got so excited. He, he leads his church down there. He says, church, are you saved? And they answer, we're first John saved. <laughs> but I highly recommend it to you. And we put all of the sermon notes are there. You can download and print them out. They're yours to use however the Lord would, would lead you. You don't have to mention my name at all. So the third one I want to mention to you is uh, another one by that Gary Carpenter guy. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, that one was in the oven for about 20 years. Do you know what I mean by that? That one, I had, I had most of the Sermon on the Mount, most of it, I understood, for about 20 years. But it's really hard to teach a series when you don't know what the first verse means. <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs, are the, their, theirs I, don't say their, I don't say theirs right, theirs. <laughs> theirs is the kingdom of heaven, okay? And I didn't know what it meant. I knew what I was taught growing up as a boy in a denominational church. He had to take me through 1 John. I understand that, that series. Then he had to take me through the God of War, which is another series that you might want to listen to. It's at the website. And then finally, on my lightning quick mind, it dawned on me. And I understood what that first verse means. And then that unlocked everything. So there's 21 lessons in 1 John. There's 21 lessons in Sermon on the Mount. You will not be the same. Trust me, you will not be the same. Hallelujah. All right. Open your Bibles to Romans 8. Well, is this not conference? Where do you, where do you think you're supposed to open your Bible to? Just going to remind you of two things, and then we're going to get into the handout that's been uh, given to you. While you're turning to Romans 8, I'm going to... One more time, put you in remembrance of the blueprint of the prayer center. Which is, now I know everybody has callings within this blueprint. We have evangelists in the house. I promise not to call anybody forward by name or anything. We have evangelists in the house that are pure blood evangelists. I mean, you get around them. If they don't, if they don't win souls, they're going to die. Okay? I'm a teacher in the body of Christ. You can put me anywhere. I will wind up teaching. I can't help that. It's what I do. I used to teach in real estate. I'll teach, whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to be, I, that's just, that's who I am. You, I have no idea what your calling is, okay? I don't know, how, it's not even my job, really. It's the Holy Spirit's job to, to let you know what it is, train you up for what it is, and put you where you belong to do what it is. You got that? Okay? But all of those, all of the parts of the body still, if you're connected with the prayer center, we're all contained still within this overall blueprint that God gave Pastor Dave way back in the beginning. And it's real simple. It's, you know, a one-sentence blueprint is pretty straightforward. And I've, I've got it in blue. <laughs> so I wouldn't forget, this is Dave's blueprint. <laughs> so it's blueprint. Oh, anyway. <laughs> He had all those activities going, 23 churches, I forget what all now, but all of that going. And the Lord said to him, you are not called to administrate the way you're trying to administrate that empire. Resign it. Move to Tulsa. And here's the blueprint. This is your commission now. You are to go as far as you can into me for the sole purpose of pulling out the miraculous. As time went on, the Lord said, I want you to take a group of people. Hello, group. And those listening or watching. And all of you together go in to me far enough to pull out the miraculous. 
Again, I'm going to draw your attention to our prayer box and the, the photos that are on there. You tell me, is there anywhere on... In fact, I'll hold it up. These glasses, nobody ever picked up these glasses. If you're missing a pair of glasses, they're right here. Okay? I'm just going to... All of these are in pot, the pictures on here. Now, inside are all kind of prayer requests. But the pictures on this box represent impossible cases, even to modern science, with the best of technology that they have. Tommy Perez is the one right here in the center. This is Tommy. Okay. I know you can't see it too well from there. But Tommy Perez, let me ask you. First off, there's no hospital on earth where I can take him. Where, where they can get him out of the wheelchair, get him speaking right, get everything right. No, there's no natural place with natural means to take him. But now what's sad is, there's no ministry. There's no church. Now I'm not saying by the gifts of the Spirit it couldn't happen. That's different. God could use you in the gifts of the Spirit for any individual today. But what I'm saying is, when Jesus himself was on planet earth in his physical body, if I took Tommy Perez there, would I bring him home healed? Yes. Absolutely. We don't have a question. Jesus is alive and well. Amen. Jesus is alive and well. The works that I do shall you do also. He doesn't want to have just one place. He wants where his name is to be able to bring these people. And they get their miracle. Repeat after me. First time. Every time. No exceptions. Now that is the blueprint. That is the assignment. Within that assignment is your calling. Again, you may be helps. You may be government. You may be evangelist. You may be teacher. I have no idea. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Stay in fellowship with us and let us pursue this mandate. Overall, this is our calling. Okay? It's fine to feed the poor. It's fine to do all of those things. Re-listen to Bronx message. It's great. <laughs> all of them are great. I can't wait. I want to hear them all again. Do you think you can receive that much wisdom in one hearing? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, Romans 8. <laughs> Romans 8. And again, I'm not even going to be. I'm just going to barely touch on this. Romans 8, 1 through 15 is talking about the new creature you have been made. It has everything to do with the law of the spirit of life. It has to be with the very fact that when you got born again, miracle of miracles, mystery of mystery, somehow Christ joined with your spirit to make you brand new. You're not that same old sinner. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You were an old sinner. You got saved by grace. Now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are God's child. Verses 1 through 15 are all talking about this spirit of Christ, that new man, that new spirit within you, who you really are in Christ. And the whole job is to learn to be led by that new man. And if you learn to be led by that new man, you're showing the whole world you are a child of God. Amen. Then in verse 16 is the first time that the Holy Spirit really is mentioned. Now I know in, in those earlier verses there, it's capital S, but every one of those should be little s. The first time that the Holy Spirit is mentioned is verse 16, and you can tell it real easy. The Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, should be Himself, beareth witness with our spirit. Notice they got it right, little s. That's the new you. That's the new you, that we are the children of God. And the Holy Spirit's always going to be telling you that, even in your conscience. You know, you've got a conscience, you know, but if you're about to override that thing, the Holy Ghost is going to come in because we're going to get to it here in a minute. He also, also, what does that mean also? That means in addition to something else. You not only have the new nature, you've got the Holy Spirit of God to also help you. Amen. And he'll remind you, you're getting ready to watch that thing that your conscience is already telling you not to watch that thing. And you're about to watch that thing. <laughs> Conscience, what was that, Alan? Shh, 
<laughs> Conscience. We want to watch this. The Holy Spirit also. See, I better read the verse again. See, look, look. Verse 26. Got to jump on that. Likewise, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, also. Boy, if you underline. Also. In addition to your new nature, He also helps with our infirmities. Then He starts going off into prayer, though, see? Now, He'll help you at that moment. He really will. He'll remind you, you're a child of God. I, if we... Uh, let me back up just a little. Verse 16. For the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You're about to watch that thing. He says, it's not who you are. That's not who you are. That's who you were. You're a child of God. You don't watch Stuff. that. <laughs> you don't watch that. Any, you don't do that anymore. You're a child of God. He'll constantly be reminding you of who you are. But there is more help than that. And that's what we're headed to with this lesson today. Because down here in verse 26, he says, Likewise, the Spirit also, also helpeth our infirmities. It's not that he just reminds you, look, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, capital S, makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Now that's really talking about intercession, but it's also because why, why can't they be uttered? He just told you you don't know what to pray as you ought. How would I have known in the very early days, oh Lord, let me preach six years in a row in Korea. How would I know to pray something like that? I wouldn't know to pray that. You know, Lord, let me, I, I, I probably have prayed. I want to be a good pastor someday. But praying in the Spirit, I found out I'm not a pastor. People call me pastor. Doesn't make me one. You can call me a Chevy. Doesn't make me a car. <laughs> I am what I am. I have Papa, I am what I am, and that's all what I am. Anyway, I'm a teacher. Now, I can substitute. I can step in. I can help with anything. But I'm not, I know I'm never going to pastor a church somewhere. It's not my calling. Okay. But he also, see, this praying, he's literally talking about praying in the Spirit here. It's good to pray in English. I, I love the book, Prayers That Avail Much. Isn't that a great book? Because they've taken Scripture, mostly out of the Amplified Bible, I think, and they've just made prayers. And, man, I love that. When I need to pray for my president, when I need to pray for my children, when I need to pray for my wife, when I need to pray for finances, man, I've... I not only got that book, I've got the leather-bound 50th anniversary edition. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, it's really good, you know. But even there, there's a limit because I can't find my calling. I, don't, I could read that book. I could memorize it, and I still wouldn't know what he wants to be doing next year. But, you know, there's somebody who knows. See, he, he, said, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Really, the better word is orphan. O-R-P-H-A-N-O-S in the Greek. I'm not going to leave you as orphan. God, I remember those first 12 years that Sue and I loved. We got radically saved. I mean, we really did. Not perfect at all, but we got radically saved. The stuff that used to motivate us did not motivate us anymore. Not interested in going to the bars. Not in it. My li Our lives were not about money anymore. I like money like you like. I like nice things. But it, what I'm saying is our, it, my life, it, we got radically saved. Okay? But for the first 12 years, now we were filled with the Spirit. As Alan would say, we could shaka, shaka, shaka right along with you. But we didn't know there was any real reason to do it on purpose. That anything was really happening until we met Pastor Dave. So we had 12 years of just <laughs> anything that would come along. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. You know, I've done everything from mowing lawns to teaching in prisons to everything in the world, you know. But we also ran into a lot of destruction that going that way. Traps that the enemy laid that we didn't know was traps. So we met Dave. Dave started saying, it's good to be a faith man. It's good, good to have the word in you. It's good. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by the word. That's all good. He said, don't lose any of that. He says, but what you need to do is couple with that the leadership of the Spirit. He says, Gary, if... If the path you're on is not the one God has for you, and the door's all slammed shut, you don't know if that's the devil or God. <laughs> he 
You know, he says, God's doing everything like wrong way, not my path. This is not what I called you to do. And you're trying to open every door and God's got them shut. Time out. I've heard this so much in my life. If it's really God, every door will open. No, if it's really God, the first sound you're going to hear is the devil slamming every door shut on that path. But once you know, once you find the leadership of the Spirit, now's the time that you engage all of that faith teaching that you know. Because you're going to kick them down in Jesus' name. Go right through every one of them. It doesn't matter the obstacles the devil throws up, see. So thank God for Pastor Dave. The Spirit also helps us with our infirmities. Now, verse 27, before I get into the teaching. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. And that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness. Every hour you give him, you don't even know what to pray. You have no idea what your calling is. Yeah, maybe you do know, and you did, but you don't know what he wants you doing next year. But he'll make intercession for you according to the will of God. He knows the plan, and he'll pray the plan. Now, the, you can, now you can get the handout out. Does anyone not have a handout that was given out today? Uh, Fred Daisy needs one. There here. So, okay, we just look around. Hope we have enough. Hallelujah. Boy, that was the shortest lesson out of Romans 8 I ever taught. But I'm teaching to people that's been taught, and I know that. So we're not, we're trying to build on the foundation, not replace the foundation. Amen. I know you guys, for the most part, have this foundation already in you. Now, this handout, what this is, uh, Tim put it together. And Tim has a software that enables him to go back through all of the prophecies that have ever come through the prayer center. And by topic, he can pull out certain things. This one, this one. Now, if you lose your, this is gold. Sell your watch. Don't sell this. Give away your car. Don't give away this. Now, we're going to have it in a PDF format with this lesson at the website. So if you do lose your copy, you can download and print another one. Okay? What this is, these are excerpts from the prophecies over the years. Most of these are through Dave. The first one is through me right before the conference. We're going to read some of these. These are the benefits. These are and not nearly all, but these are the benefits that comes to a person who will pray, and I mean seriously pray, in other tongues. When you start getting weary and you want to, how do I say it? You start slacking off in your prayer time. It would be really, do you really want to give this up? Do you want to, because I'll just tell you plain, I'm a teacher. If you pray, you'll get those benefits. If you don't, you won't. I've got a few, a few agreement, but that is the truth. Oh, I can pray in English and get everything you can praying in tongues. That's a lie. That's, a, that's just a flat a lie, because you don't even know what to pray. Who, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You calling yourself, are you? You're setting your own path. Most ministers do. The denomination I grew up in, uh, you know, when you finish your four-year Bible college curriculum, you've got to decide where you're going. And if you haven't been trained how to hear the God, you're going to pick that yourself. Sorry, I mean, truth is truth. Uh, no, I just, I just, well, anyway. Be nice. Okay. So we're just going to start going through here. Uh, feel free to write on. This is yours. Make this yours. Underli I'm, you know, my, my copy, I've got red underlines. I'm going to have, before this is over, it's going to be the ugliest thing you ever saw, but it'll be so good. Because notes and scriptures and verses. And we're going to spend some time right here on this today. Because I want you to understand. Yes, sir. Can I have my talk? Okay. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Now, let's just talk plain. Can we just talk? Again, I won't pick on Tommy, because I love Tommy. And Lynn Perez, his mother, loves me so much. No matter what I say, she's going to continue to love me. And let's just talk. 
If Jesus was to walk through the wall right there, I believe if he walked through the wall and put his hand on this picture, Tommy Perez in New York would be healed. Isn't that right? Speak the word only. Let's, let's just talk for a minute. How are we going? But yet, I, I, Sue, Aaron, the pastor that was there, the parents, and I don't know how many others over the years have prayed for Tommy. And so far, nobody can get him out of the chair. I will pay your way. I, this is a, I mean it with all my heart. I will pay your way, pay your room and board. All expenses paid, I'll fly you right there. If you're such a hot rod, you can get it. And I hope you are. Amen. And don't get me wrong, I hope you are. But so far, if you can get him out of the chair, I'll pay all expenses. Gladly do it. But if you can't get him out of the chair, you've got to pay me back. Now, never yet has anyone taken me up on that offer. Okay. God's will, now listen to me, God's will is that any one of us pray in the name of Jesus for Tommy Perez and he gets out of the chair. Amen. I have a vision in me. Of Tommy walking in here, standing upright, come in here on his own two feet, pick up this microphone and tell what great things the Lord has done for him. That is God's will. Now, what is between that and where we are? What is between us? See, that's, that's what Dave would call the limitations imposed on us by the flesh. Dave, that's the wording that he would use. There's something between where we are and that happening. And this ministry is all about eliminating whatever that is. Well, it's the flesh. I'm going to read you, before we get into what praying in tongues does for you, I want to read this one that Tim, another one that, that Tim sent me. This is, a, this is a prophecy, I believe, through Dave from 1995. And it's called, Stand in the Furnace of Purging. Isn't that an image? There's the furnace. You know, there's a verse that said, Our God is a consuming fire. Who will walk into the fire to be purged? See? So let me read you this. Few eyes in the hour in which you live are able to see things as they really are. For they are clouded by deception and the wiles of the adversary as he works his plans and purposes through the religious systems of the day. For few there be who are yielded unto my spirit who pray much in the Holy Ghost. And because of this, the enemy has taken undue place. These things must no longer be. For those who will take a step toward me, I will not only manifest my mind, but I will manifest my emotion through them. I hear, I hear so many of the messages. Remember the, the kite that went up so high it disappeared? Then Alan comes and he says, but there's other strings attached to that kite. For I am not only a God of mercy, I am a God of wrath. I am a consuming fire. And I desire to purge out of my people those things that stand between me and the full operation and reception of my glory. But few there be that can stand in the furnace of purging to the completion of death to the flesh. And that is why there is so little power in the land. I am not one who cannot be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. For I stood and walked among men. I sit at the right hand of the Father, ever living, to make intercession for men. So hearken unto me, and stand in the furnace of purging. And I will deliver you from the hand of your enemy, as his hold is broken over your flesh, and you walk in the fullness of my glory. 
But understand that power and persecution go hand in hand. So lift up your eyes in the evil day that persecution begins to emanate from those yielded to the adversary round about. Understand that your war is not with flesh and blood, but against wicked spirits who desire to possess the land. Pray for those whom the enemy uses and bless. Do not curse, and you will be able to stand and receive all that I have for you. Understanding the wiles of the adversary, his desires, and his plan. It's the flesh that stands between us and the fullness of this kind of glory. Now, benefits to those who pray much in tongues. Got your, you got this? Let's go through this together. And I hope we, 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 Father put a, put a rein on my teacher's tongue that I not rabbit trail too much. But right on the other hand, Father, let me not leave out one syllable yes. that your people need. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I trust him. This first one came through me about two weeks before the conference. Be known as the house of prayer. I'm going to recommend again to you that, that message. I think it's titled Remain the House of Prayer or something similar. It's about two weeks before conference. And at the end of it, or one of those services, he gave this prophecy through me. I long to do things that have not been seen in this generation. For example, Tommy Perez. Okay? Homer Betancourt. Wonderful, lovely, beautiful man of God. And he's blind right now. That is not the Lord's will. And as of this moment, we've all prayed. We've done. Dave got him free for a while, but eventually it went back, back again. And then Dave couldn't get him free the second time, right? But that's not the Lord's will. Okay. See, I've got to be careful. <laughs> I long to do things that have not been seen in this generation. Now get this. I long to demonstrate my father to a lost and dying world. But I need a people who will yield to me and surrender their lives and allow me to consume them with that very spirit of prayer. Now, there's not an individual spirit known as the spirit of prayer. He's really talking about an attitude in you where you long for the prayer closet. Hmm. Oh, allow, allow me, allow me to purge the floor. Allow me to pur the lessons this week. My house shall be known as the house of prayer. What did he do? He drove out the money changers. He drove out everything that wasn't of God. He taught daily in the temple, that's you. And then when he was able to take his rightful place, then came the blind and the halt to him in the temple. And he healed them. Hello, temple. Him is in there. When him is in there and your flesh is not between him and the people. Allow me to purge the floor. Allow me to purge the temple of everything that must go. Allow me to fill you with the very presence of the Father. That you and those around you will hardly be able to stand. Yield to me, says the Lord. And be known once more as the house of prayer. If we accomplish nothing else in this conference. When you get back to confront Samo. See, I'm not the same as when I left. This house has become a house of prayer. Amen. Then this conference was well worth it. Okay. The second one is the endurance prophecy. It came through Pastor Dave. It's the one that's framed and out in the foyer of the church. I'm going to read it again. It, this came at the, that same meeting where I read to you the notes. This, this prophecy came in that same meeting. The first meeting of the prayer center. Great peace is my desire for you that you may fellowship with me in love that I can filter through and through your life. I desire to take you from where you are to a place with me, 
a place that you have known about way down in your spirit that from the foundation of the world I have prepared for you. So as I lead you from place to place, I desire to flow through you with my grace. And if you will edify and edify and edify yourself. Now, what is he talking about right there, church? Praying in tongues. You will see before this is through, I will, boy, this is what I underlined. I will purge you from everything that is causing you to fail. Now, who wants that benefit? Can I see a show of hands? If you pray in tongues, you'll have that. If you don't, you won't have it. You'll be coming to conferences 10 years from now knowing why you're still a saint. We're not here. The day for patty caking is over. I'm going to say that, I'm going to say that quote again. Persecution is coming. You have, we haven't seen any persecution yet. Real persecution is coming. That quote from the fastest growing church in the world is in Iran. They found out real quick. Persecution destroys the church of the converts. But persecution strengthens the church of disciples. Amen. Hello, disciples. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. I will purge you from everything that is causing you to fail. You will not only taste the victory that circumstances. That, can, that, that change can bring. But you will taste the victory. Of the resounding peace inside of you. That will dominate everything. In a circumference around you. People will, boy, people's going to want that. They'll ask you for it too. How do you have that? Anyway, second one, or third one down. I quiet the mind. When I move through you with edi edification by my tongue, says the Spirit of grace, I quiet the mind and clear the channel that I may have first place. Why? So I can teach you the things that I would have you to know. Why? So you will not walk in the flesh. But in my spirit, you will learn to flow. Now if you pray in tongues, you're going to have that. And I don't mean Shandai five minutes a day behind the windshield. We're talking disciples. Those rabbit trails. See, every one of them, I want to preach. <laughs> but it's more important that we hit the highlights here. Now get this one. Oh, I, every one of these, to me, is just a treasure. I want these. I want these benefits. Faith that comes from me. <clears throat> Many would not do the things of the leadership of my spirit pertaining to those areas of love and sacrifice had not their hearts been prepared by my compassion. So many will fall short. But for those who will give themselves continually to the edification, he's talking about prayer, to the building up of, them, to the building up of themselves in their most holy faith, are those who will also keep themselves in that love. Hear what the Spirit would say. For when I said, build yourself up on your most holy faith, it is the faith, it is that faith that comes from me. Your most holy faith will not be the faith people attempt to employ to serve their own exaltations, their own personal ambitions, and their own greed. For the faith that I develop from that line forward concerning my love is the most holy kind and it is developed through edification and will not respond to those things that are asked amiss I want that I want that edification above the problems nobody needs that right <laughs> edification above the problems for all the things provided for, <laughs> we sang it again and again. You're a good, good father. I am loved by you. Fathers provide. Now listen to what he says in this one. I love this. For all the things being provided for, did I not even provide for your edification? 
Did I not even provide a way that is beyond you to build yourself up in edification above the problems in your life? What provision is there that I have not established, nor have I provided? Come, 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 get to know me. For you will find that I am meek and lowly, and you will find rest for your souls. The next one, when you pray my mind supernaturally. This is the one that first grabbed me when I was reading this. It's because this, if, if I had time, we'd go through that lesson again out of Matthew where I take five different meetings that Jesus did. I just stay in Matthew so we know we're not duplicating other, the same meeting more than once. Just five different meetings. You could get them out of Mark, Luke also. Where they brought multitudes to him. I mean multitudes. Don't, don't be thinking a, size, a group this size. 4,000, 5,000, maybe 10,000. And it says, and he healed them all. Now see, that's what he says here. Throughout the country, if I had the services, everything would be done, says the Lord. Everything. There's be no Tommy Perez. There'd be no wheeling them in in wheelchairs and wheeling them out the same. No. Everything would be done. <laughs> For many times in edification, when people let me pray, do you hear this? It's really up to you whether he gets to pray through you or not. When people let me pray, Almighty God, Almighty God has put himself in a position where it's up to you whether you let him pray. What kind of father do we have? That will... He's the ultimate servant. It was God that had, that had Pastor Bronk and Jim passing out the papers. Just a picture of real servants. See? Your father is the real servant. He's the real servant. And he's the greatest of all. I got to read it again. Throughout the country, if I, if I had the services, everything would be done, says the Lord. Everything. For many times in edification, when people let me pray my mind in places of authority, I can herd people towards the answers. As you know, don't stop, for you are loosing more fronts than you know when you pray my mind supernaturally, says the Lord. The next, in this process of mortification, Hear what the Spirit would say. In this process of mortification, when you pray in the Spirit, don't you know the mysteries you are speaking is everything I am in you, to you, and through you, the hope of glory. And know you not that when you get to the place of glorious harvest and power, that I will already have taken care of those things in you that needed to be put to death that you might finish your course. See, along the path, it, it takes endurance. It takes time. But as you do it, he mortifies the handles, is what he's talking about. Again, the things that the enemy would use. Mr. Good-looking, Miss Good-looking, love of money, the need for exaltation of man, plain old pride. He purges those things. So by the time that harvest what he's talking about when the miracles are flowing through you he's already taken care of the handles that the enemy would have used to destroy you who wants that who wants that I don't want the power just to be destroyed and bring another disgrace on the kingdom of God <clears throat> I want this he says if I pray I'll have it and I don't think he can lie I read somewhere he cannot lie if I pray I'll have it what happens if I don't? You're good students. The next one. Do not stop the edification process. It is a good thing to continue to pray in my language that I have given to you. Now, let's stop right there. If you, have, you don't have to turn to it. I already marked it so I could turn to it. Uh, this time, this one time, this one time only. 
do I give Jim Martin credit <laughs> for putting me in remembrance of an obscure verse that I had heard quite a few years ago, but to be honest, I'd forgotten it was even in the Bible. But it's good to listen to Dr. Jim Martin. Uh, by the way, you don't have time? Excuse me. I hear every message. I, I, I don't miss any services here. I hear every message here. If I'm, even if I'm out of town, I still hear them. And I hear every message. Now, I don't think they really do, but in, in, in the spirit, I have a chair. I'm a, I'm a card-carrying member of the Family Prayer Center of Immokalee, Florida. And I am a card-carrying member of Grace Christian Church in Beaver Creek, Ohio. I have a chair. <laughs> not really, but I do. In fact, I've said, Bronk, they're not sitting in my chair, are they? <laughs> I, I don't miss any services. I don't miss any. But I know you're too busy. Well, when do you listen to them? Normally, I'm, I'm hearing those guys on the treadmill at the gym. Oh, you're not going to the gym either? Okay, this is going to happen. <laughs> That's enough. Okay, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. I I'm not, he's still mortifying, okay? There's still mortification happening. Yes. Oh, this time and this time only. See, look where he says, it's a good thing to continue to pray in my language that I have given to you. I recently heard a message of Jim Martin, and he was reminding us of the Tower of uh, Babel. And they were building this tower, and, and God says, you know, they're all of one mind, and they're all of one language. They're one speech, and nothing that they have conceived in them is going to be withheld. They're going to be able to do this. So what did God do? He came down and he confounded their languages. All of a sudden, they can't speak to each other anymore. They're all speaking these different languages, and it stopped what they were doing, and they were scattered. But see, in these last days, God is building another tower. He's, he's building the kingdom of God. He's gathering a group of people. Now, I'll read this to you. It's Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. Got it from Dr. Jim Martin. It's on page 1286 of your Bible, if that helps you. Uh, this will help you. It's right before Haggai and right after uh, Habakkuk or Habakkuk or Hab as I call him. Hab. You remember old Hab? He's, right, he's close to Zeke over here. Anyway. Uh, it's, but it's Zephaniah 3.9. For, for then will I, turn, will I turn to the people a pure language. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. God confounded the languages at the Tower of Babel to stop what man was going to do. But in his last days, he has given us a pure language that none of us can mess up. Because it's, we're not even the ones originating the language. It's Him giving us a pure language by His Spirit, creating that language on the inside of you. Why? To not only build each one of us individually, but to hook us together the way the body is supposed to be hooked together so that we can get this job done and harvest this earth. And, and we'll start the new heaven and the new earth eventually. It's a pure language. You can't mess it up. <laughs> How many want that? If you pray in tongues, you're praying a pure language. You're praying everything that he has called, everything that he is. Okay. God. Mm. It's a good thing to continue to pray in my language that I have given to you. Now get this, for no matter what you feel like, you are not, you are not affecting the prayer that I am originating on the inside of you. In fact, I am working you for the day that you will be free and receive what I have for you. You will find out, boy, I have, I've, over these years, I have found this out, that no matter how downcast you feel, you are still able to pray in my supernatural language. Boy, I've been under assault where my emotions, I told him one time, I, I try to be honest, you know, try and be pretty, pretty trans, trans well, most of the time. I came to this one service a long time ago. I said, if I was going to go by what I feel, I'd just let you all go to hell. 
I said it from the pulpit. I did. I said, this is how I feel today. I, did, I don't know why I woke up. I don't care about you at all. <laughs> but I came and I obeyed anyhow. You know what that, the title of that message is? Truth changes fact. Probably the most downloaded single message I've ever taught in my life. Didn't matter how I felt, did it? He was still able to go through, flow through me. See? Well, he's saying in praying in tongues, it doesn't matter if you had the bluest Monday in the history of Blue Mondays. If 14 devils named Samo are camped on your emotions, you can still pray in tongues. And it's a pure language that he gives you. And no matter how you feel, it does not affect that language. Dave always said, it doesn't matter the volume, whether, you know, loud or whisper. It's the syllables that matter. And it's, they've got to be spoken for that authority to be released. It doesn't say he that thinks in an unknown tongue. Amen. No, he that speaks. Once you speak it, that's where authority is. Okay. Hmm. God is selecting the prayer for you. When God says something is impossible, you reckon it is? I think so. It is impossible to pray in the Spirit any time without Him going out ahead of you and working God's plan on purpose or purpose. That's the primary reason He leaves you out of it. <laughs> it's a stroke of genius. God says, they want my will. They have no idea what it is. They want my plan. They have no idea how to get there. How in the world? What if I prayed for them? My spirit knows the plan. Knows every step of the plan. If they would just allow my spirit to pray through them. Then I could answer my perfect plan. And they can never fail. I think I'll pray in tongues. See. It's in, Okay. The only thing, oh, this is so important. The only thing he borrows from you is the authority that you have in your spirit. When he creates that language in your spirit and you say it. Before I even read that last sentence, now look up here at me. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. And the next thing out of his mouth, therefore you go. How does he have authority on planet earth? Let me ask you this. When Sam Walton left this earth, did he still run the board meetings at Walmart? No. He lost his authority, didn't he? Well, wait a minute. Jesus, we know, in his glorified body is not on planet earth. In his glorified body, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. So how does he have authority on earth? See, to have authority on earth, you've got to have a body that's from the earth. Hello, body of Christ. Hello, body of Christ. That he needs you for the authority. And when you yield your tongue to him, you've got a tongue that's for on, in a body from this earth that has authority here, but you are yielding to him to pray his perfect will through you with authority. In the name of Jesus. We are his body. It's important that you speak it. Glory to God. Hmm. It's pretty hard to fail. When God is the one who is selecting the prayer for you according to his will. And according to your call and purpose on this planet. Dave would say you're the little piece of turkey in between. Yeah. Remember the little sandwich? God the Holy Ghost. He prays up the prayer. God the Father is the top piece of the bread, you know. He answers the prayer. And you're the turkey in between. <laughs> you little turkey you. Pretty hard to fail when God's praying for you and runs around on the other side and answers the prayer. But the only way to fail is not pray or not be obedient. Okay, that's another lesson. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I said, the first level is getting to where you can hear God. The harder level is getting to where you hear him and obey him. Sometimes that takes more mortification. Be strong for your direction. Uh, the number, uh, Jim, Bronk, any minister that has a prayer line ever, the most number one requested thing, it's either sickness or I need direction. I, I don't know what God wants me to do. Let's see what God has to say about that. 
When you edify yourself from praying in the Holy Spirit, don't you know that there are those times when I am preparing you for something that I will have you do? Now get this. And without knowing it, you will build yourself up in revelation and, and edification and what it would take to handle that. So know this. When you are praying in tongues, you are working my plan in your life. So be strong and let me and my mind come in and order your edification prayers. Because you will see if you, don't, if you won't stop, the truth will keep getting stronger and stronger until your path becomes very clear to you. So be strong. Be strong for your direction. Now let me amplify just a little bit from Pastor Dave. You don't always hear a voice. You can. I've heard him many times like that. Thou shalt this. You, he didn't say thou really. <laughs> you shall this. You shall that. Remember when Dave would say God's plan for your life. His direction. His ministry will grow in you like a tree. You remember that? And you may not ever hear uh, move to Dayton. You may not ever hear start a Bible school with your spiritual ear. You may not actually hear it, but if you keep praying, it's going to keep growing in you. I want you to start a Bible study. What? Well, first, before that, I want you to get your doctorate. He didn't know why. didn't have any clue why. I don't want to go back to school. I want you to get your doctorate. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to pray instead. Shandala Bakota. I want you to get your doctorate. <laughs> Didn't know what, but finally he couldn't resist. He knew it gets, I'll tell you what, it gets to the place where when you, it'll get so strong in you that not to do it is sin. Yeah. To him that knoweth and doeth it not, yeah. it'll be. And so he, all right, go get my doctor. He didn't know at that time God was going to have him start a Bible school, an online Bible college. That needs that doctorate as part of the authentication or accreditation or whatever it is process. He, he needed that credential of having a doctorate for what God called him to do. He didn't know all that in the beginning. When we know not what to pray for as we ought, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. And if you'll keep it up and keep it up, even if you never hear with your ear, even your spiritual ear, do this or do that, I think you will. But if, even if you don't, his direction will grow in you. It, it'll be like a tree. Right. And you'll have to you say, i got to do this. Yeah. i got to do it. Yeah. It's what he wants from me. I know it is. Well, how do you know? I don't know how I know. I just know. Yeah. It grew in you like a tree. How many wants that? Yeah. If you pray in tongues, you'll have it. Yeah. And if you don't, you won't. And you won't be able to blame God or your pastor. Yeah. Or your wife either. Or your husband. Hmm. Told you I'm a teacher. <laughs> how, how many want to delight God? I like to delight Him. How about this next one? He delights when things come to pass. Who do you think is going to be the most happy? Us or Him the day that Tommy gets out of the chair? Him. Him, and He's been waiting a long time. And I, I just, me, me, every one of these is the same. I just have a real relationship with the Perez family. He delights in edifying you. <laughs> you know, your flesh gets so tired praying in tongues. And the devil is really good at what he does, telling you it's not working. This isn't accomplishing anything. You might as well, you'd be better off watching a John Wayne movie. <laughs> you'd be better off doing this. Go, go feed the poor. Do anything but pray. You know, the devil's relentless at telling you it's not working. But God says he delights in edifying you encouraging you and he delights when something that he has encouraged in you, you in and given to you that you begin to lift it up and walk in it that's what I underlined and walk in it that it comes to pass these things delight him these things delight him this is why he enjoys the time you spend in worship and the times you spend praying in your prayer language. The flesh gets so tired of praying. And God so enjoys it. Your spirit actually enjoys it. Hmm. The kind of praying that makes the difference. Who wants a different kind? <laughs> I, I, I wanna, when I pray, 
I want it to make a difference. See? You cannot pray my mysteries. You cannot pray my mysteries out without them affecting what is happening. Now get this. On both an international and local level. For the more that you pray, don't you know it is your authority, but it is my mind. And you are releasing me to move in the kind of praying that makes the difference. Whew. The edification is about you, that I can build you up above anything, anything that you can move when I move and talk when I talk. So be strong and continue on the path that you are on. For you are scheduled to see mighty things that you will be delighted over, says the Lord. I'm about to convince myself to pray in tongues. When you pray something out, this I am pleased in. That one of the major sources to information is the language you speak when you pray in tongues. And when you pray something out, then you receive it and you will see it will be in your direction. Now get this. In the power you walk in. And even the teaching and preaching gifts you will possess. You will see all of these things will manifest. And you will see mighty things happen. Before I return. Boy I want that. Don't you want that? Serious about prayer. Every time. My church. During their dispensation. Would get serious. On me. And serious about prayer. And fasting. The love. My love. And they that. It should be they that walk in it. Would spring up time. After time. Because this is who and what I am, says the Lord. They will not travel down the path I have laid for them supernaturally without running into my love. And me wanting to bring them forward into the fullness of it. For in that, meaning in that love, there is no fear. And in that, meaning that love, you will never fail. I'll never forget one of the meetings up at Jim Martin's church. Pastor Dave was there. And when he got through, he went back to rest just a little bit in Jim's office while we did some things at the ministry. And he says when he got back there, he says for about one or two minutes, wasn't very long. He said all of a sudden, it's like I stepped over into the love of God. I, I stepped into this room. He said it was all I could take. I, 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 I couldn't. It's, it's like a, a glory that he couldn't stay in. But he said, I got just a taste of it. What that true love of God is. See, and it's what he's talking about here. There was a prophecy that came forward quite a few years ago. And I, I don't have it with me. But I remember the image. The prophecy went something like this. Every, <clears throat> many, many devils are camped. Guarding that door of love because at all costs here's here's a banner like in hell at all costs none may enter there to really walk in the love of God that's where the power really is we know that hmm. he says every time my church in whatever dispensation they were in any time they would get serious about prayer and fasting they're going to enter into his love. More of it. I'm all about that. Let's enter into that love. I want to be one of those that opens that door and kicks every devil away from it. And we'll bring a horde of people through that. Hallelujah. Setting yourself a direction. When you worship and pray in the spirit, you are setting yourself a direction. For you cannot worship and pray in the spirit without setting yourself in a direction. It just can't happen. For when you do these things, you welcome me to come and to come in my strength and set your direction. I take great pleasure in answering your prayers and giving, the, giving you the things that I have to give you. 
Oh, I want him to have great pleasure all the time. <laughs> I love the title of this one. Pray in the Spirit, a supernatural thing. This is the supernatural language that God has given us in these last days. Because he is building a tower. He's building the kingdom of God. I still, I'm holding fast to Smith Wigglesworth 1939 prophecy. He was right about every phase that, that was coming that we've already talked about this week. He hit first three out of three out of the park. Hit them perfect. I believe if that's the case, he's hit this fourth one also. This greatest revival that the world has ever seen. I believe the gifts are going to flow from all. Every, this is going to be Joel's army this time. Not so much pulpit driven as it is believers driven. And I believe, he said, it'll be a wave of the gifts. I mean, I believe every gift of the Spirit is going to flow through the body. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hospitals will be emptied. I believe that. Do you have any... You ever... I've never been to St. Jude's Hospital. Sue and I support it. Because right now, since we can't go in there and supernaturally get the kids out, at least we can help them get the kids out with the best medicine that we have. And the thing I love about St. Jude's, no parent has ever given a bill. Did you know that? It's all funded. But I've been to the Children's Hospital here in Tulsa. You can't, if you can go in there and not break when you see a five-year-old kid with blastoma brain cancer, if you ever want to see the devil on planet Earth and what he's capable of doing, you will never convince me that Jesus would leave those kids in that hospital. You'll never convince me. He would empty that thing out in a day. And I think that's exactly what he intends for us to do. Amen. Do it in his name. He'll find employment for all those people. Don't you worry. <laughs> the nurses and the doctors. Thank God for them. He'll find employment for them. Amen. Jesus will not leave them in there. Okay. <clears throat> Where in the world? Oh, pray in the spirit. A supernatural thing. Pray much. And know it is a supernatural move of God that you are releasing every time you pray in the Spirit. For I bring the prayer according to my mind. And I have the power to bring the prayers to pass. Who else can do that? Who else knows what to pray about and in what order? Who else knows how to bring prayers to pass like this? Who else knows how to move on this heart? And that heart and reach into an individual's life and heal, deliver, and restore and bring wisdom and answers and much more. Not only do I use your prayers, but I also know how to tap one here and tap one there to join their prayers to, to yours so that I can move according to my mind. Pray much in the spirit. Please remember this. It is a supernatural thing. You want to operate in the supernatural, do you? Pray in the Spirit. It's, you can't do it without God. It's God every time. It is my will and my power being released through you. One thing he needs, our authority. Dave, I believe this one's Dave. I really don't think we know how much it means to him right now where we, where we have come as a body where we have come as individuals, how delighted he is in that, because he has authority on this earth through us. He's talking about our bodies. And things are changing, and they are changing quickly, though we can't see it. And the faith that we are believing for him, for what he is going to do, there is still one thing that he needs. And it is our authority. The one thing he needs is us to not stop. Stay on this path of growth and edification and spending time with him. Edification, praying his will into your life. He loves you so much. That he even steps in with his own language. 
So it can be your authority to get things done that we don't even know need to be done. But through praying in tongues, he says, Ah, I've got your authority. Now I can put the direction and the truth in it. It makes it hard to fail. When he created a language for you that you can use while you are mopping, driving, flying, have your mind on something else, yet he is using your authority and praying his will into your life. And then he calls it edification. <sighs> My goodness. See, I know windshield prayer works. That's all I had in the very beginning of this message. Sue and I came. <laughs> I was already a wordaholic. I had a lot of word in me. I had a lot of teaching in me. But I didn't have any direction of the Spirit. I had a lot of wrong doctrine in me. Thank you. From TV preachers. Thank you very much. And other, others. But anyway. So the only thing that really changed. I listened to Dave for about six months. Because I didn't trust preachers as far as I could throw them anymore. But I listened to Dave. And I'm one of the. I checked out every verse. I mean I checked it out. And I didn't know about med meditation and whole images as much then as I do now. But I knew enough to know, did it fit the context or not? Six months, I checked out his message. And I told Sue one day, I said, you know, I can't find anything wrong with this. I mean, I've checked it out. He's got chapter and verse for everything he's saying. And I made that decision. December of 1992. So I'm going to turn off the CB radio. I was stuck in the cab of that truck. 40, 50, 60 hours, sometimes 70 hours a week anyway. I said, I'm just going to turn off, turn off the radio. Turn off the whatever, anything in there. I said, I'm just going to make the cab of this truck my prayer closet. The only thing that changed, I, you can't drive and read your Bible. Those trucks I drove were industrial. They were loud. You, all I had was a Walkman. It was too loud. I couldn't hear my Walkman. I tried. <laughs> so it wasn't like I was hearing the word or messages in the truck. The only variable that changed was prayer. A lot of prayer. 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, sometimes 70 hours a week. And I'll give my testimony again. When I started doing that, everything Dave said would start to happen began to happen. I mean, he started giving me little... Little, I call them teaching visions, but little pictures to help me understand. He began tearing down false doctrine in me. He, I mean, he tore some of it down right down to the floor, and then he dug a basement. <laughs> and then we started from there back up. But I, everything that Dave said would happen began to happen. My understanding. It, it, false doctrine got tore down. The right doctrine, it got replaced with. He started dealing with me, how I deal with my wife and how I treat her and different things. And he's, to this day, it's still going on. But I'm telling you, the only variable, you know, if, in, if you're an engineer or a scientist, you want to do an experiment, we want to see what happens if we change this. We well, only change one thing at a time. You don't change the temperature, uh, you know, and the light. At the same time, you just change one. Let's see what happens. Well, in my case, the only thing that changed, it wasn't more study, more word, more anything. I wasn't listening to messages during that time. The only variable was massive amounts of praying in other tongues. And boy, I'm telling you again, everything Dave said would happen began to happen. And I kept record of it best I could at the time. And after just, not, wasn't even quite two years, he called me full time into the ministry. Isn't that something? Now, I didn't have time to waste. I was already in my late 40s at the time of that. Kind of a late starter, you know. <laughs> I didn't have no time to waste. But if you don't have no time to waste, we need to get with the program. Don't go back to Samo. Kick Samo's hiney out of your house. Is that holy enough? <laughs> Kick Samo's hiney out of your house. Amen. Change, you rascal. Do it on purpose. I'm going to pray Zama Zama hours a week and then figure out how you're going to do it. Good intentions don't count for anything. I needed to lose weight. I think I'll join a gym. Then I put that off for about two years. Then I finally did join a gym. And I found out a horrible thing. Joining a gym doesn't cause you to lose weight. 
I found out I had to go and actually do stuff. Then I found out another horrible thing. I had to go more than once. I had to do it again and again and again and again and change my diet and so forth. Praying in tongues, it's got to change, man. I'm, I, I want revival. I still believe this. I'm a, I'm a true believer. I am hooked to this mandate that we will see in our lifetime. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the maimed. I want to watch legs grow out during the service. During the service now. Thank God. He said if I was running the service, everything would happen. I think it's time to let him run the service. Well, how are we going to do that? We don't run, nobody's smart enough to figure that out on our own. There is one that's been sent to help us. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he's available 24-7. I just see him like going with us everywhere. And I know he's in us. Don't write me no letters. But he just goes with Gary all day. Man, going to pray this hour? Going to let me pray through you this hour? No? Okay, you're too busy. Okay. You know, okay. Well, oh yeah, that TV program you like. I forgot. Okay. Maybe in 30 minutes after that, you know. How about now? It's over. Gary, you going to pray? Oh, lunch. I forgot about lunch. Oh, with the lava cake this time? Okay. <laughs> Aren't you glad I'm not picking on you? <laughs> and revival tarries. And we go, where's God? And he's going, where's prayer? Where's prayer? I'm here. I'm here. I have every answer you'll ever want. I have all the power you're ever going to want. I'm here. Will you let me? Will you let me mortify? Will you let me edify? Hmm. Am I preaching okay? Yes, sir. I feel like crying. I just want to repent again. Because I've been at this a while and I just, Sue will tell you the truth now. I pray, I, do I pray, baby? I get up early before dawn. But I'm telling you, I'm going to crank it up. I'm going to crank it up. You watch and see. Hide and watch. I'm not going to stay the same. Amen. I pray the same for you. Mm. Are we to the last one? Did we make it that far? Yes. Pray his perfect will. I have tongues for edification. Do you have any idea how important it is that you could have a language turned over to you here we go, Zephaniah 3, 9 again. This language that he gave us. Perfect language. Pure language, he called it. Do you have any idea how important it is that you could have a language turned over to you that could cover everything he is asking you to do in your life? It is transferred to you, so it releases him to do it. To pray his perfect will for you in that tongues of edification. He said, for in this, I have created a way that you could edify yourself. When he said that, I saw you praying in the edification that, comes, that came from God. That opens it up for him to move freely in your life. Especially towards what he has for you to do in this lifetime. He that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But why? It addresses anything. You being sick, your call, something you're supposed to do. What do you think happens? You start praying in tongues, and he is borrowing or using your authority to give the power over to you so that he can move in and you can go forward. That is is edification. How many is going to pray just a little more in other tongues? I do want to remind you of one thing, because it may have been a while for some of you. Listen, when you start really doing this message, praying in tongues, fasting, doing everything that's the four pillars, is, we call them the seven pillars here. 
which includes waiting on God. And anyway, you, we've taught all that before. Remember this, what happens. When you start doing this, he starts, it's like when you're going to purify gold. Don't be surprised if when you really get serious about doing this that you start acting worse. How many, how many know what I'm talking about here? Can I get a witness from people? Because what's happening, the, the, the dross is coming, just like if you heat gold, if there's any impurities in it, that's going to start coming to the surface. Don't forget that part. Say, so, oh my goodness, I was, I was acting better before I started praying. That stuff's coming to the surface where even, we all saw it a long time ago in you. Yes, you're just now seeing it. We loved you anyway. <laughs> But now you're seeing it. Don't forget that part because the devil will tell you it's not working. No, it's working perfectly. Amen. It's working perfectly. Start fasting and yell at everybody. Kick the neighbor's dog. <laughs> no, he's bringing that stuff to the surface. Then you can deal with it. But you'll permanently deal with it. And you won't have that anymore. Amen. Glory to God. So don't stop. Don't stop. Uh, you might sell your watch. Don't sell this. Yeah, you might sell your car. Don't sell this. Make sure you keep. And if you do somehow lose it, go print you another one. Go where it's, it'll be at the website. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You know what's happening? Because I'm trying to get his permission to have a prayer line like we've had at the end of many of the services where... We line everybody up. We get, you know, Bronk and Jim and, and others maybe to, to pray. But I'm not getting his permission to do it exactly like that. But you know why? He's trying to get your mindset away from the pulpit ministry. Now, it's fine. Listen, if any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. So forth. I mean, there's a time. But in this season... He's not trying to build us up at all. He's trying to build you up. We are your servants trying to hold you up to God and hold you up and say, you know who you are? You're a child of God. You're a child of light. Quit letting the devil tell you you're no good. You're a child of light. You've got God on the inside of you, you house of God. Everywhere you go, we just need to strengthen that with that presence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second Chronicles somewhere. I know about where it is. Second Chronicles. About seven, I think. Hallelujah. All right. Nope. We're going to back up a little more. Hang on. Ah. Yes. Yes, sir. Again, I have to. Again, I've got to thank Jim Martin. <laughs> He read most of He's still in my verses too, okay? I mean, I had a really good message that I didn't preach because he preached it. But I am going to mention one verse that he didn't include. I get one. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 5, okay? This is a... This is a Solomon's temple. This is at the stage where they brought... Everything was, everything was ready... And they brought the Ark of the Covenant for the first time into the Holy of Holies. What's that a type of? That's the new birth, is it not? Okay. Now, if we, if we started at, at ch uh, chapter 5, verse 2, we'd read all that. Just trust me, that's what's happened. They have brought the Ark of the Covenant and put it in the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> Starting in verse 11. Now, come on, feet, stay here. Come on. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. For all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them, now notice, does this number have any significance to you? A hundred 
and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. How many were in the upper room? A hundred and twenty began speaking with other tongues. They were sounding like trumpets, prophesying, giving glory to God. That is a type of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As they began to worship and in type and shadow, speak with other tongues. Look what happens. It came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. Here we go again. Were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. When they had lifted up their voice and the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music worship and praise the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house you are the house of God then the house the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud why for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God when you're worshiping, lifting your voice like the 120, praying in other tongues, making music and melody unto the Lord, singing with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, <coughs> speaking in tongues, you're filling your house with the very glory of the Lord. I believe that glory is going to come. Another verse that I didn't look up, it said, the glory so filled the temple. That the people outside bowed with their faces to the pavement. Because the glory had so filled the house. Now that reminds me of Smith Wigglesworth. I'm trying, I'm trying to close. I really am. I, I believe with each. Now not a pulpit anymore. See we thank God for Smith. I believe he wants to so fill the individual houses. Your house. You're a house of God. You are the temple of God. Worship. Praying in tongues, edify, edify, mortify that flesh, mortify that, edify, edify, that the glory of the Lord fills the house. Amen. You can't walk into Walmart. You can't go to the post office. You can't stop and get gas without that presence. I believe people are going to be on their faces. Not in awe of you, but in awe of the glory of God. Amen. We're going to have a harvest in your... I'm, I'm so glad to be alive. Now that we, I get to be part of this. When you go home, kick same old Heine out of your house. Don't do the same thing you did before. Be changed. I'm telling you, I'm telling you again, I believe it with all my heart. This is a historical conference. We are in that transition now, going from the teaching wave to the ministry wave. Joel's army. Where his presence and his power is manifest through every soldier in the army. Amen. Soldier on. Soldier on. Soldier on.